The following documents are hereby directed to be received and filed. The council submits disclosure of interest forms from Council Member Gruber, Council Member Harris, and Council Member Spaulding on introductory number 352. We have before us a resolution endorsing emergency action on state home rule legislation to control and monitor the finances of the Rochester City School District. Before we take action, I know some members would like to make comments, myself included, and before we vote, I'll be asking for an amendment. I'd like to ask my colleagues on council, as well as the mayor, and Mayor Warren, I know that you'll have some people who reach that, and her team for making themselves available on such short notice to make, take action on this legislation. We're at a critical juncture and must look forward, look at every available action to prevent the dysfunction taking place at the district. Even now, we still do not have the information we've been requesting from the district. The mismanagement of tax dollars cannot continue, especially when we're risking the education and future of our youngest and most vulnerable residents. Through prudent fiscal management, the city has maintained excellent bond ratings from credit agencies, allowing the city to borrow and fund capital projects in a fiscally responsible manner. The school district is financially tied to the city and their fiscal mismanagement threatens to negatively impact our bond rating and may also have a negative financial impact on the residents of our city. It is my sincere hope that the state will take action and provide the oversight that is greatly needed. I know that Chris Wagner will make a statement for the administration, but do any other council members wish to make a statement? Madam President, um, speaking as someone who has been a uh, member of the Rochester Board of Education for a long time and a past president, um, I have nothing but the utmost respect for the people and the work that they do day in and day out over there. But I will tell you that as chair of the finance committee, I have deep concerns, specifically as it relates to the overall city bond rate, and that we have to take some type of action to ensure that we build up confidence in this community and amongst our council colleagues who are asked to approve um, district's budgets uh, every year. I'm very distressed and concerned that we're, we're, we're at this point, although there are lots more answers um, that are and will be forthcoming on um, um, this issue. I believe that now is one of the most important times for us to try to provide um, assistance and help, uh, and along with the state as a, as a third party review to certify, to build confidence, particularly amongst all of the stakeholders involved. One of my uh, favorite sayings is love and marriage. You can't have one without the other. The city school district in the, in the, uh, the, city school district in the district are married, whether you like it or not. And what happens there affects our bond rating. And what happens, there, it happens here um, also affects uh, the district. I think that it's very important that council um, look at this as an opportunity to be helpful. I don't think that it's, it's time to have political fights to go back and forth. This is, this is serious issues as it relates to finance. And if we can't ensure that we have um, strong fiscal controls in place, we won't be able to do anything else. It's something I said when I was on the school board. I said the finances are probably the most important thing, and I think that's the same thing here in the year at the city. There's nothing more important than finance. We can't have great rec centers, we can't pick up trash, we can't do anything without the finance. At the district, you can't have community schools, you can't have early childhood education, you can't have any of that without finance. So for me, the most important thing is that we work to build confidence. We need confidence in order to be able to carry out the business of government. And sometimes that takes help. And I can tell you from all the conversations I've had this past weekend, the district, the district needs help. 
Y'all need more kicks. Need more yelling and screaming. They need help. And I think that this action is broad enough, and it allows the district to get that help that it needs. But more importantly, it allows us to be able to have that confidence that is so important um, in the financial. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paul. Thank you, uh, President Scott. I'm sorry I was. Uh, delayed and, and I want to just say a couple quick things. I want to echo what, what uh, Councilmember Evans is saying. I want to focus on the language of stability and uh, not so much on some of the negative language but on the fact that we need stability and I know that there are people who say we're going to be okay, just let us be. I have great confidence in our school board members going forward, I really do. I know they mean uh, to take this job on very, very seriously. Uh, I, I am certainly concerned about our rating and all that, but I'm more concerned about our children. And I know that while we are not uh, in a position to fix things tomorrow, we have to be seen as helpful. And if the language sounds punitive or shaming, that is not a goal I would like. Uh, but language has to be seen as really our chance to help. And we're in this together. I feel strongly about that. Uh, I know people are saying, you know, is there a way for us not to be in it together? But we are in it together. And we should stand together, um, and we should not be afraid to open our hearts and open our doors to the state. And I think that's what we're asking to do today. So I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to be with you, and I'm sorry I was a bit late. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I just also wanted to add that we were previously discussing how important it is for us to continue to have regular communication and meetings with one another. We had talked about it many times in the past. And I really think that it is um, imperative for us to actually move that forward. As we were talking about how much information we've received, how many opportunities we've had or lack thereof at this point uh, to acquire and or meet face to face, um, it, it's concerning. And I think we need to, because uh, this is, again, it's not brand new. Uh, two years ago, we were provided this information from board members that said if we looked at the potential trajectory of the district, that we would be uh, potentially facing some very um, huge financial constraints. So this is not necessarily new information for us, unfortunately. So I think at this point, it will be critical for us to, um, as Vice President Willie had, uh, like had said um, in previous meetings, for us to come together and have more regular meetings in regards to our financial um, situation and how, what we're gonna do moving forward because this legislation, although very important, asking for that fiscal oversight does not necessarily even guarantee that we will acquire it. And in the meantime, we have a lot of work to do. And so I encourage us all to make sure that we make our schedules available to get this done um, regardless of this because uh, as we are in together, we actually need to meet and talk about it together. Allow me to apologize in advance. I am greatly and grievously concerned. We have had a crisis of confidence with the Washington City School District and this community for decades. Today, the fiscal implications of that crisis of confidence have come before us and they compel us to act. The Rochester City Council is limited in what it can do and has been for decades. Conversation is wonderful, but the responsibility to act in a fiscally appropriate manner is the responsibility of the Washington City School District as it pertains to their budget. They have failed to do so. There is nothing that this body can do to repair this crisis of confidence on its own. We act today, we come today, not because we want to, but because we are compelled to, because the fiscal mismanagement has metastasized to such a point that it is negatively, it has the potential to negatively impact the fiscal well-being of the city of Rochester. So I do not attack any commissioner of schools. They are all wonderful people. This is not a question of whether they are wonderful people. This is a question of whether or not this system can be trusted to not only effectively educate our children, which has been an open question for decades, 
But now the question is whether or not it can be trusted to properly manage its budget, which is the basic responsibility of any governmental organization. And at this point in time, the only thing that we actually do know is that they have failed. We do not know the extent of the failure. We do not know the implications of the failure. We do not know if the failure extends not just from their 18-19 school year, but to their 19-20 school year. And we do not know if there are any controls in place or if there will be any controls in place unless some other organization honestly comes in, assesses that organization, and gives them a path and guidance to be successful. We are one community, but our responsibilities are, are greater at this point in time than I think they've ever been before. We have to challenge them, not from the standpoint of attacking them, but from, re but from the perspective of recognizing the potential damage that is, that, that is ahead of us. And we must seek help. So I understand some of my colleagues don't know, and, and neither do I, whether or not the state of New York will be able to do anything. But ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, the only entity that can come in and do something is the state of New York. So that is why we beseech them for help. And I would encourage the state to act immediately because the crisis is here and it is great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this one, this one, administration. Good afternoon. Within the last week and a half, the city became aware by a letter that the city school district had a problem with its 1819 budget. The letter suggested it was the result of overspending in certain areas, including health care and special education. We received some financial information from the school district on Friday afternoon, which shows a $42 million operating loss for the 1819 budget in the general fund. It must be cautioned that the results are unaudited and do not provide a complete picture. However, they are cause for great concern. We also learned late last week that as a result of the district's statements about their budget problems, that Moody's has placed the city on a 60-day credit watch for a potential downgrade. We are here today proposing home rule legislation asking the state to intercede and provide oversight of the financial affairs of the district in order to ensure fiscal stability the project to see the school district. Thank you. So first, if there are no additional comments, we'll do the amendment. I'd like to make a motion correcting triple A in section three of the legislation to double A negative. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of amending introductory number 352, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Mm -hmm. um, abstention. Carries the 801. Now, let's vote on introductory number 352 as amended, a resolution endorsing emergency action on state home rule legislation to control and monitor the finances of the Rochester City School District. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Abstention. Motion carries 801. Having concluded our business, this meeting is adjourned.